Ooh, that just made me really dizzy. Hello, creeps. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Anda, and horror is my life. I have the most messed up book I have ever read to share with you today. I read this book actually a few years ago. My brother's the one that recommended it to me. I loved it back then, and I decided to reread it again this year, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I want to talk to you about it because it is beyond fucked up. So here we have The Devil All the Time. This is by uh, Donald Ray Paula. I'm gonna give you kind of like a synopsis and my feelings on the whole book and a little bit of interesting information about the author as well. But first I want to tell you that the reason that I am so excited to talk about this book today is that I have found out that they actually made a film of it and it was actually supposed to be out in May, but they postponed it. So now that uh, now people are thinking that it'll probably be out summer slash fall of this year, but for sure 2020. So I guess my whole point of making this is to one, bring this book to your attention in case you haven't seen it and give you time to read it before you watch the movie. Um, and then also just to keep your eyes peeled for the movie as well because I think it's going to be really, really good. Okay, so now let's get into the book itself. First, I wanted to say that this book is not for the sensitive. It's not for people who have um, difficulty reading hard topics. I wrote a few notes here, so I'm just going to read a little list of things that are involved in this book. Okay, so violence, suicide, serial killers, slow painful death, uh, dirty cops, insect eating preachers, cancer, pedophilia, racism, horrible talks of war. This book has pretty much everything that is awful in it. It has a lot of religious connotations and then the very opposite of that, a lot of just awful horrible events. So it's really interesting this kind of like Play between good and evil that happens in the book. It's not a typical story. It's not like you follow one character through a story and that's it. This book probably has like 15 main characters, which is insane. That's a lot. And you kind of are introduced to them piece by piece and then kind of at the end, like the way that I see this is that the author ha is like making a quilt. Just stick with the analogy for a second, okay? He's like making a quilt and there are a bunch of pieces and they're like a little bit sewn together but you can't really make out the whole picture. And then at the very end he pulls a thread and everything comes together and you're sitting back going, what the fuck did, did I, am I looking at? What did I just read? So that's kind of how I picture going into this book. It's so amazingly written, and I think that Donald Ray Pollock is so, so, so talented. We have a little boy named Arvin, and I guess he he would be considered, I think, like the main character, even though there are so many main characters, because he's the only consistency in the novel. Like, we get him as a child, we get him as a teenager, we get him as a kind of adult, like an older teen. So I think that he would be considered the main character. I will also say that a lot of these characters do not gather your sympathy in any sense of the word, and Arvin is kind of the only person that you do, or at least I did, um, gather a little bit of sympathy for him. However, there are so many other characters. Uh, like I said, we have a dirty cop, we have a serial killer duo, we have a preacher that eats insects, we have people that are kind of just born into this life to have messed up things happen to them. So essentially this takes place in Ohio in a place called Knockham Stiff in 1957. It kind of goes back and forth between Ohio and West Virginia and it's after World War II. We start off before Arvin's even born with his father Willard and we get a bit of back information about him, backstory about him and uh, kind of just like the effects the war had on him and his slow decline into just depression and all sorts of things. His wife gets really sick after Arvin's born and he ends up making this prayer log where he like sacrifices animals and pours blood everywhere to pray that his wife gets better. It is a truly devastating story and I think the main thing you take from it is like, well, my life isn't that bad. <laughs> you know, it's one of those stories where horrendous things happen to every single character. I mean, the cities, the towns that they're talking about are super, super small, uh, really, really poor, not well-educated people. They tend to have a lot of horrible things happen to them or bring it upon themselves in some way. Another thing I wanted to say is that the author actually grew up in a place called Knockham Stiff, Ohio, and I think he was born in the 50s, 
So I don't know if any of this is derived from characters that he, or people that he knew growing up. Sorry, I just felt someone touch my foot. I thought it was a cat, but apparently it's a ghost. I don't know if any of this has any reality to it. I really don't know. Okay, so the name of the book, The Devil All the Time. There's a line in the f on the first page and it says, Arvin didn't know which was worse, the drinking or the praying, talking about his father and his prayer log. As far back as he could remember, it seemed like his father had fought the devil all the time. So it really is kind of, like I said, this really interesting parallel between religion and the opposite of that. Um, there was another quote as well on page 260. It's hard to live a good life. It seems the devil don't ever let, let up. So really we kind of are with Arvin through all of this. We run into characters in Ohio, we run into characters in West Virginia, and then eventually, like I said, everything sort of comes together and we get just like this crazy clusterfuck of violence and gore. Another thing I wanted to mention is we have an omnipotent narrator, and I think that's so important for this novel because we jump to characters like every other page. It's insane. It really just really showcases his talent as a writer. He's amazing. He really is. So you really do get a look inside everybody's head and that's, you know, obviously important for the story. There's not one moment of boredom in this book. It is not a book that you can read and just start thinking about something else and then you're like, oh, I have to go back and read it again. There's no way. This book is 307 pages of just action. Okay, so the story is kind of like a mixture. It's really a story about like lost dreams, heartache, revenge, forgiveness. There's kind of a bit of everything in here. I can't really give too much away just because there it's just there's so much going on in here. I did want to read a few of these quotes on the back here. I love this quote. This is from the New York Times book review. It says that it's br it's brutally creative. Pollock knows how to dunk readers into a scene and when to pull them out gasping and I think that is 100% true. Uh, down here from USA Today it says, fulfills the promise in Knock'em Stiff, invites comparisons to Flannery O'Connor and Raymond Carver. So Flannery O'Connor I think was, I think was just spot on. Um, if you don't know who Flannery O'Connor is, she was a writer, she has since passed, but she was a writer who wrote a lot of short, well I think she just exclusively wrote short stories. I might I might be wrong on that, but I only have her book of short stories. Her stories were just like this very crazy mixture of like super super religious aspects and components of the story and then just like murder and horrible violence and horrible characters. They they just always contain this really crazy balance of those two things. And I think this story yeah, I think the comparison to Flannery is brilliant. If you haven't read Flannery O'Connor, I do suggest that as well. Um, she's actually a really big influence on Quentin Tarantino. Another thing that I wanted to say is that Donald Ray Pollock, so I actually found this out today because I was just flipping through reviews, and this is from LA Times, and it says that Donald Ray Pollock was a high school dropout. He worked for 32 years in a paper plant, an unusual entry into publishing, before getting an MFA and racking up writing awards. So first of all, what a G. How inspiring is that, you know? It really is never too late. It's never too late to pick up the pen and get started on a writing project. This is not his only novel. Um, he has one called Knock'em Stiff as well. Um, and I think a few others, but this is the only one that I have read so far, but you better believe I will pick up the other ones. Yeah, I guess really my point of this whole video was just to kind of bring this to your attention if you hadn't heard of it, so that you could read it before the movie comes out and then just keep an eye out for the movie as well. I think it's going to be really, really good. The director is Antonio Campos. He's a writer and director, actually, who has directed a few things but nothing that I have seen and I think that if they focus on the story and don't stray too far from the plot I mean how can it go wrong um and it's not straight horror too like I do want to be clear that it is um I believe that they labeled it a drama slash thriller which it absolutely is and reading it the story that's very evident but the horror aspects are undeniable in this book sorry I keep doing that it's just like I don't know what this is this novel is just cover to cover insanity. So I wanted to share that with you. I did want to put a warning that if you are a sensitive individual, the story is probably not the best for you. But if you're just looking for something to really grab your attention, to read and just be like, okay, life isn't so bad for me, this is the book for you. Pick up this book, The Devil All the Time, Donald Ray Pollock, and let me know what you think if you have read it. That's it, my friends. That's all I wanted to say today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.
Goodbye. Are you busy summoning demons in the kitchen? Are you busy hailing Satan? Do you want to attack that puppy? Leave her alone. She's a good puppy. Thank you.